He's a soldier turned author who's also spent time clearing and campaigning against landmines and cluster bombs. But Simon Conway's latest work was inspired by his fascination with modern day terrorists and those that try to stop them. It's his third book and it's called A Loyal Spy. Welcome, Simon. Um, what's the book about? Well, it, the, the sort of background event, the, the betrayal that, 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 that frames it, is, is uh, about a, uh, an informant in Afghanistan uh, who provides information um, that, uh, and a British military intelligence unit then attempts to assassinate bin Laden mm -hmm. in March 1999. It turns out they've been double-crossed, the attempt is bungled, and, and in the ensuing confusion, a CIA agent is killed. And the, the, um, the sort of the events then jump forward to 2005 um, when this same agent who, who had caused this, the, the murder of, of, of the CIA officer comes out of hiding, posts a confession on YouTube, uh, effectively implicating this British Army unit in the death mm. of, a, of an American um, and making a very sort of tangible threat against, against London. He, he quotes from Samuel Te Pepys, the, the greatest tide that ever was struck London. Um, so, so there's, there's this atmosphere of, of a, a very uh, an existential threat against London. Mm, and you set this in the aftermath of the bombings uh, in July, uh, the 7th, 7th of July bombings. Why did you choose that time frame? Well, I thought it was an interesting time. I think it was a time when we all felt vulnerable. I mean, if you think about it, there was obviously there been the 7-7 bombings. Uh, Iraq was teetering on the, on the edge of, of civil war. You know, it was about to get much worse. Um, uh, we had the prospect of further you know, attacks in, in, uh, here in the UK. And then also the other thing that was going on was New Orleans. You know, this, this hurricane had mm. devastated a city. Mm. So we were seeing images of what a devastated city looked mm. like. So I think, you know, in our, you know, in our consciousness, that was, a, that was an, well, certainly in my mind, that was an interesting time. You did spend time in the army. Was that of any use in, in your writing? Oh, I think so. I mean, I think, you, you know, you get a certain kind of perspective from being, from being a soldier. <laughs> Yeah, I was quite young then. <laughs> that um, was in the Black Watch, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, and I, you know, I, I met some very interesting characters. What everyone said is that it has a lot of credibility. Your writing in this book, and, uh, but when you left the army, you actually went on to to uh, deal with landmines and to campaign against cluster bombs. What made you do that? I think that to some extent I felt slightly unfulfilled by my army career, you know, that I hadn't done anything that really had, had grabbed me. And um, it was about the time that Diana kind of walked, Princess Diana walked through the minefields in Angola and I'd become aware of this issue. Uh, uh, and so I joined the Halo Trust and I went straight away off to Cambodia mm. and I spent, you know, I spent the next six years, some of it on my hands and knees clearing mines. My first job was, was up in northwest Cambodia with 300 Khmer uh, deminers clearing mines. We... These pictures are from uh, clearing aircraft bombs in Abkhazia, breakaway mm. republic uh, of Georgia. And so, it's quite a transition to then become an author, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I, I, funnily enough, I'd always wanted to be a writer, I think, yeah. since I was about 10 years old. And, yeah. and everything else sort of happened in between. And so mm. I'm finally doing it for a living now. Interestingly now, uh, what we end up reporting on every day is about the threat of IEDs. Is, is that the natural progression, do you think, from landmines? Well, I think certainly IEDs are, are a, big, a big threat now. Um, most IEDs are built out of unexploded ordnance that, that's mm. left lying around, be it artillery shells particularly, um, or in some cases, double, triple stacked anti-tank mines. So, so it's the same materials that I was destroying mm. as an aid worker are being used. Um, and there's definitely a bazaar out there. There's a, there's a marketplace. Mm. So mm. an insurgent group can buy in shells from, 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 from someone. They can buy in a chopped mm. up car from, a, from, 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 a, from an auto mm. chop shop, and they can put together a package that then becomes a terrorist attack. And that's, mm. I think, one of the you know, interesting things about the development of terrorism. Looking forward to the future because everyone's trying to predict what the threats will be to this country with the Strategic Defence Review looming. Um, what will your next, if you, if you were to write a book about the next problems that we're going to face in, on the international scale, what would it be briefly? Well, interesting, there's, there's a scene in my current book um, in which a group of Iraqi insurgents blow up an oil pipeline. They mm. dig six feet down into the desert and they blow up our 48-inch high-pressure line. Mm. And it's based on a true event. That cost the Iraqi government something like $500 million in lost revenues with that one attack, which probably cost less than $2,000. So system sabotage is the big, is the big worry now. Mm. You've got, as I said, a bazaar, a marketplace, um, and, and there are vulnerable areas within cities particularly. All right, Simon, fascinating to talk to you. Thank you very, very much for coming in, Simon You're Conway. Welcome.